Hey everyone, this is Nick from Mecca Warehouse and today we're back with weekly update number 153. Let's uh, jump right into it with Week in Review, the sort of talk about what's been going on in the warehouse, things that are coming up, stuff like that. And uh, I guess first off, it's been less of a chaotic week than the, the previous week. It feels like things are starting to get under control and getting into a better rhythm with uh, just everything warehouse related trying to balance different tasks i think uh alex being able to take on more responsibilities than he had you know even a week or two ago has helped a lot and uh, that's helping me balance my workload a little bit and so things are getting a little better there uh also baby could be here any day now uh kate's due date was i think officially like last friday she thought it was more like monday it's not here yet She'll be here soon, I guess. So who knows? Any day now, for all I know, I'll finish the update and I'll get a call and it'll be time to head home and start preparing for that. So so who knows? Uh, hopefully it will coincide with the, the right time to be least impactful on the business. That way I can get back in here in a few days, uh, even if it's only for, for short days or whatever, and keep everything running. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure for the couple days while I'm not here, everything will continue operating. It'll just be, you know, what stuff might that affect? I don't think we'll really know until I'm not here and depending on how available or unavailable I am, but uh, it could be any moment now. Uh, let's see, inventory reduction sale is still continuing. We removed another um, dozen or two items, I think, uh, middle of the week. So uh, that collection is a little bit smaller. I think there's a handful of items we might be adding. I think I had a message about uh, candidates to get added to the sale a few things that we missed before probably won't be very many i need to look at those uh, but there might be a few more things in there you know by friday i guess the day that you might be watching this but gradually things are selling down to a level where they're we're more comfortable with the level of inventory left for those particular items and we expect that collection to continue to shrink until we either decide to turn it off or it's down to just the last few items whatever that is uh, also, I want to talk about pre-orders a little bit. We're now, I think, on week three, maybe, the new pre-order system. We are getting some questions about uh, Q4 pre-orders. We've been gradually adding more pre-orders. Uh, this week, we added the RG Epion, uh, as well as a few other items, I think, uh, kind of catching up with pre-orders. As for Q4 pre-orders, so October, November, December, um, expected release date items, We've been asked if we're going to post any of those items as pre-orders, when we're going to do it. My suspicion at the moment is that we likely won't. The, uh, the story I've been kind of getting from some of our distributors is that Bandai has announced to them that they are going to use some sort of expedited, uh, expedited ordering system, something like that. And I guess the gist is that they're not going to send confirmations anymore. My assumption is that means that they're planning on fulfilling everything, but we don't know that for sure. So until we kind of know that that's what that means and have a, a better warm and fuzzy about that, we probably won't put Q4 pre-orders up anytime soon because generally when we post pre-orders, we wanna post pre-orders that we have some, some commitment from a distributor or manufacturer that we're actually gonna get the item and get the numbers to cover what we are listing on the site. So that's that's our current plan with that. If that changes, if we get confirmation, they'll go up when they arrive or we know they're on their way to our distributor, we'll probably put them up as early birds. So you can still keep an eye out for that and uh, potentially jump on that before they actually come in, but it will be a, an early bird rather than a pre-order. So kind of last minute. And uh, I think that is basically it for Week in Review. So let's move on to Team Picks. This is where uh, some of the guys in the warehouse show off builds they've done recently. Let's see what they brought in. Hey everybody, Alex here from Mecca Warehouse. Today I brought in this Garchomp from Bandai. It is actually one of my favorite Pokemon and favorite kits here that we sell. Uh, the coloring is great. You can see how the mouth actually moves and the one thing that I personally had a hard time with was the decal or the sticker for the mouth it had to go in between the teeth. So that was like the one part I had very, uh, very, you know, I couldn't get my fingers in there. I didn't have a tool to get in there. But other than that, this thing went together great. It was nice and easy. Looks good. 
And yeah, I have zero complaints about this thing. Hey, so uh, this week I've got the um, Paddlebur uh, Carrier Team set. It includes um, the vehicles you see there, the uh, command vehicle, which is the little car, the special labor carrier, um, and the kind of truck that hauls it. Um, the carrier can be positioned in the upright like I have it displayed. It can also be at like a 45 degree or laying down flat as if it's lugging the paddlebur around. Um, all the wheels move independently. Uh, some of them have metal tie rods to connect both sides. And uh, like it's from Motoroid, so it's a good price and good quality kit. And that is it for Team Picks. Let's move on to Q&A. So this is where I answer questions from you, the viewer. If you have a question you want answered, do me a favor, post it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer it next week, uh, assuming I'm in the warehouse next week. Uh, first up, Soju5814. Was there something that happened while you were building that you will always remember? Bonus if it's build related. There's a, I feel like a bunch of moments while I've been building that I will never forget. And, um, and I think a lot of that's because of the stream. Uh, if, if you're unaware, I stream every Saturday night, possibly not this Saturday if the baby comes at the right or wrong time, depending on how you look at it. Uh, but if normally I'm streaming Saturday and the interactions with the chat are sometimes hilarious, very entertaining. They definitely um, entertain me, if nothing else. So there's a few moments there. I think uh, two that stand out. One was when my wife was a, a guest on the stream and uh, she said something about her little leg for the, I think it was a Porta Nova or something she was building and uh, someone asked to see it. And there's a kind of a fun, funny moment there about getting my wife to show a little leg on stream. And uh, the other one was when, uh, I don't know, I don't know how the conversation got there, but we, we figured out, someone was curious about how expensive a uh, solid gold pair of nippers would be. And uh, we derived during the stream what that would be approximately based on the price of gold at the time and stuff like that. Those are probably the two, the two at least funny good ones. There's probably a few that are not as good, not as funny. Uh, but I'll, I'll stick with that for now. Uh, next question, plastic germs. With next year's presidential election, do you think business will be affected in some or any way? So first off, I like to stay out of politics whenever I'm posting publicly, especially here. I think that stuff can be very divisive, divisive, whatever the, the right word is there. I don't wanna comment on the election or anything like that. Most likely, depending on, you know, if we have a new president uh, at the end of the election, it could affect things. Uh, presidential politics and politics in general definitely affect business. So it depends on who gets elected and what policies they decide to enact. I know certain things like tariffs and import-export policy can definitely affect us pretty easily. Taxes and things like that can affect businesses. So. Most likely something might change if the president changes. If it doesn't change, things could still change. So it's, I don't even know if it's related to the, the election itself. Um, fun question. What was your favorite board game growing up and what was a fond memory from it? Um, favorite board game growing up. I suppose, I don't know, I've, I've been a fan of Monopoly and I've been a fan of Risk. I don't know if I have a particularly fond memory of either of them. I feel like most of the memory, especially of Risk, I feel like almost every Risk game I played as a child resulted in probably one of my brothers deciding they didn't want to play anymore because they were losing and were frustrated and, you know, wiping the whole board out. So that's not really a fond memory. It's probably a common memory, though, I, I suppose, for anybody who maybe played with younger siblings. Um, I'm trying to think if there's any fond memories in there. But uh, I, I think those two are probably my favorite board games. Although there might be another one I'm forgetting about. Uh, all right, one other question. MWG89, what kit would you immediately buy and build for stream night if it got a mega size release? Uh, I feel like anything, if there was any Gundam Wing mega sizes, I doubt there'd be one. I'd probably do those instantaneously. Um, I don't think if there's anything else, but those, like a mega size heavy arms or death scythe or something would be really cool. 
and I would be on that really fast. I don't know. I mean, I could see as long as it wasn't something horrible, mega size aren't super, um, super, super expensive considering their size. So just about anything new released mega size, I would probably be, be interested in. And I think that is it for questions. So if you posted a question, thank you, appreciate it. Uh, and if anybody else has any questions for next week, post it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them next time. Thank you for watching. See you next time.